Hello and welcome to the next episode of my playthrough of the 1.9 team direwolf pack from Feed the Beast and look I've done a building and this is our portal uh, back to here very good and our portal here takes us to here which is awesome inside it's big it's big auto crafting is set up laser io nodes actually run all the way up so we can get all the way down with our laser io stuff gems auto crafting laser io hopefully you know a bit about laser io if not let me know and i'll do a quick tutorial on it <clears throat> uh laser io are inputting and outputting so we're pulling from the drawers downstairs on orange and we're extracting on white and we have a, a deny filter here that says don't pull out the amethyst shards so this is putting in and turning them into gems and here i'm making the essences so all seven essences being made similarly uh we are extracting on white uh with a with a deny filter saying don't pull out the gem and we are inserting on channel two and that's going to be inserting these guys so underneath here uh, let me just take that out. You'll see that on the up there are there's one insert which is on white so everything's inserting on white and then there's an extract on orange which is extracting amethyst shards and there is an extract on purple that's extracting the source gems simple today lots to do towards the end of the episode we're probably going to hopefully probably hopefully hopefully probably get into apotheosis and get some serious enchanting going but the first job is to get this source battery set up and passive source sourceberry farm sourceberry farm done we have passive Sauce. Let me show you it. Down here, I've added a drawer to put the sauce berries in. I've got a few more Ars Nouveau stuff in it. And if we go up here, you can see... Uh, oh, why are you drop them there? Pop you in there. Excellent. Well done. You can see my sauce berry farm. So before I talk about the star buckle, I've got an agronomic source link that you know uses growth ticks like we had over on our farm. This is filling up this sauce jar. We'll do something with this sauce soon. So every time one of these grows, we get some sauce. Passive. Great. The star buckle. So the star buckle essentially you get one of these shards by giving a wild one gold nuggets right and then in the enchanting apparatus you put four gold and then one of those in the middle and it turns into this guy right click that guy on the floor and you get one of these guys it's he'll collect source berries from fully grown source berry bushes i right clicked on him with my dominion wand i then shift right clicked on this chest and that tells him put the source berries in this chest laser io extract on white connected we'll go into this drawer Got it? That's the source berry farm bit and the agronomic link giving us passive sauce. Now, the mycelial source link. The mycelial source link is made with a couple of gems, a couple of gold, and mushroom stew. I had a bit of an accident while trying to find the mushrooms because there's a funky place over here, which is this mushroom house. I died in there. I died in there because it's full of piglin brutes who can pretty much one-shot me because I don't have any armor or anything good. So I ran away um, after I died, and we'll go back there when we've got some decent armor. So the mycelial source link, according to the book, will take source from source berries. It will actually take source from any food item, but it generates more source from source berries. So it's getting the source berry on here, it's turning that into source, and it's filling jars nearby. So at the moment, we've already filled two jars worth from these source berries, and it's now filling this one. I'm actually going to change this around and use some relays to move the source about, but that's coming soon. All this has got in the laser I.O. setup is I've connected it with some red lines because I like them to be a bit straighter than just all the way across here. Uh, extracting on channel three from our draw system the source berries, popping them on the stand, and it's working. We are filling source jars with source without having to do anything now this is running a bit low because this is running quicker than this but eventually this will all back up we'll fill all of these jars and this will start to build, fill up because he ain't gonna stop nope he's gonna keep going so i just want to see what happens when this guy can't do anything what are we at here we're at 48 if i put that card back in here Maybe I just timed it. Maybe I just timed that perfectly. So it looks like this has got an internal buffer. That's filled up. That's full. So this is now not doing anything and we should be growing. Yes, we are. 55. And if I put an empty source jar down or one with not much in it, right, let's collect you. And let's put you there. It should all fire into action again. And it is. And that will start going down again. Okie dokie. That worked as I hoped and expected. Jolly good. Right, relays. 
So the plan is to fill all of these jars with source. This is gonna kind of be my battery and the way we can move source about is with relays. Right, relays. The source relay. Uh, the source relay enables you to transport source, basically, and you can use a Dominion one to say, take the source from A, and you left click or right click, and then right click on the next one, and it'll put it in B. But there are different types of relays. There is the depositor relay. This guy operates in a similar way, but basically will deposit to all jars within five blocks of it. And hopefully I've put this at five by five. So I could put a depositor on top of here and it will deposit source into all of those jars. There is also the collector. The collector is basically the opposite of the depositor and it will take source from any non-linked. So we need to make a couple of relays, right. <laughs> Have a depositor. So my plan is to pop the depositor on top of the middle one and now we want to pop a relay, just a standard relay on top of this guy. Aren't those source gem blocks really cool? Now if I uh, position set, no I want to, uh, I don't know whether this is working! <laughs> ah! Back in a minute. Okay, got it working. Um, it's basically uh, target to send. So right click on this one, then right click on that one, 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 and then I right click on that one, and right click on that one, right click on that one, to right click on this one, and now we're getting the source from the Sourceberry farm, and we're getting the source from this guy, and we're filling up our battery. And now I want to find a route to send so, oh no, that wants to be a collector, I think. We need to have a collector here within five blocks. Make a collector. One, two, three, four. Pop a relay in there. It does magic. That's a collector. And I want to put a source jar there. And we're going to put a relay in the middle. I think I can still get up. Yep. Yeah. We're going to have this relay from there to there. I think I'm going to have my collector here. Huh? <laughs> And you are going to send to you. And you are going to send to you. <laughs> and I've just put another couple of a couple of jars down, and look, it's just doing its thing. How cool is this? Getting it from upstairs, and it's getting it from over there. Right, next, tier two spellbook. A tier two spellbook needs blaze rods. I think it might be time to get a mob farm going. And we're gonna use ours to do the mob farm as well. I have armor and I need to go hunting for wildens because we need wilden horns and things like that for the next step. There is a ritual called uh, 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 containment. The ritual of containment captures nearby entities in containment jars. That's step one. Step two is the Drigme. The Drigme tends to animals nearby, including those in containment jars and monsters and anything in those containment jars, and it harvests the drops. So if I can get an Enderman, if I can get a Blaze, if I can get a cow and a chicken and all sorts of things in these containment jars, and then I get a pile of Drigmes around it, it will generate the drops from those animals and mobs and experience. That's gonna be our animal farm. So hunting for Wildenhorns because to capture a Drigme, a wild Drigme, uh, you can befriend them, which I.e. turns them into this shard thing by throwing a Wildenhorn. So I need lots of Wildenhorns because I want five or six or maybe more of these Drigmes. So we've got to find some Wildenhorns, then we've got to find the Drigmes and then we can get the containment ritual going. All right, that's what we're going to do. All right, off we go. So far, we're on a successful boring mission. I'm afraid boring. Managed to get some Wildenhorns, some Wilden Wings. I had these already, Wilden Spikes. I haven't seen any Wilden Defenders. 
that's all right. We didn't need them. We needed the horns. And we've captured uh, a wilden stalker. So we're going to get some wings. A wilden hunter. So that's where the horns come from. Now, drink me time. I fear this may take a while, but I've got uh, a pig, a rabbit, and two bees. Because yes, we're going to do something with bees. <clears throat> More on the drink me though. Come on, where are you all? Wow. Nails. There's a drink me. There's two. Straight on. There they are. There they are. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yay! Oh, that's so cool. There's another guy. This is so cool. Hey, dude. <laughs> this is such a good mod. I've rarely played with magic mods, but this is epic. Okay, I want to get more. More! I've just spotted a little star buckle. We're going to grab this guy as well. Because they're cute and we're going to need them. Oh, there's two. Oh, fantastic. Starbuckle. So the process for Starbuckles is this. Ooh, you can get it. Look, and he's turned in, and he's going to collect it, and now he's going to turn into the shard. Ha ha ha! Good in it. So we've got two Starbuckles, three Starbuckles. One of them turned into two shards. Oh, that's cool. Didn't know they could do that. Uh, okay, on we go. Found another one. Northeast-ish. Pop you lot in there. Right, off to the nether. So many death points in here. Wither skeletons are going to be in there. What's that place? I just want wither skeletons. I want to use my nether gobber sword because this guy apparently is great at getting wither skulls. We've got reasonable armor on. It's going to need repairing, but oh well. Um, and I've got my dispel and my snare. Okay, this feels like something silly to do. What on earth is that thing? Okay. Okie dokie. <laughs> um, I want to get the wither skeleton. Did we get one? Did we get a wither skull? I've got a corpor, whatever that is. I don't know what you are. If these turn into ancient debris, then we have just found the best source. I don't think it does. That's such a shame. Oh, what's it? <laughs> hey, dudes. That it? Is, is that it? Ancient debris. I'm loving Dispel, by the way. Just putting that out there. I'm at another one. This one's up here. I need to find blazes. Oh! Oh dear. I have no idea how that managed to kill me. <sighs> I think I know how he, um, he killed me. Um, yeah. Uh, all of my, all of my armor's, uh, gone. Um, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> um, we are still on the hunt for blazes, but we do have a wither skeleton. So we get some wither skeleton skulls from this farm. And I've got a zombified piglin because they drop gold nuggets, I think. Anyway, right. We're going to go back to the nether now and try and find a fortress and blazes. Finally. Fine. Whoa. <laughs> Finally. We've traveled. A rather long way. Thank God for waystones so I can get home. We have come all the way. So I, I, as far as I'm aware, kind of these things appear in corners. So I traveled in a northwesterly direction. Um, oh. And, um, and yeah, we've just traveled through all of this snow stuff. There's, there's some interesting stuff. There's some interesting biomes here. I want to check these out. These have got warped endermen in them, apparently. I didn't go to any of them because um, I want to just get this job done. But there's another piglin brute thingy here. Anyway, let's 
let's get over to this fortress. Uh, let's put a waystone down so at least we can get home. Um, and then find some blazes. Slavely bridged across. Um, so we are going to set a waystone here. Thank you very much. Fortress of Never. Done. So now we should be able to get home. Home? Home. We just need three levels. I have my sword. I have my armor. I need my snaring device because I want to snag the first blaze I find. And, let, and let's see what we can do. Oh, oh, perfect. Oh. Got him. Got him. Right. Now let's get some blaze rods without dying. Okay, we've got some blaze rods. I want to get enough to get the tier 2 spell book and a few more. Well, I think a very successful mission. We have our blaze, and we have a wither skeleton, and we have some blaze rods, and we have a statue. What can you do with the statues? Statue loot on a, on a statue. Ooh. We may have to investigate this mod. Let's get this farm built, though. First things first, the tier two spell book is now craftable. Essentially, this gives us access to many, many, many more spells like Silk Touch. Hello, pup. Why are you facing that way? Why are you facing that way? So, tier two glyphs that we can get. And the one, one I really want is Silk Touch. That's on here somewhere. But um, let's have a look. Conjure Water, very useful. Crush, we could start doing some ore processing. Knock down trees if we wanted. Duh, duh. Flare, very useful. Turns your mobs onto fighting, fi on fire. Grow, makes things grow quicker. I think it's called Exchange. It is Exchange. This is what I want. So, in fact, if I put that on my to-do list, get rid of you and put Exchange. Look, see, it comes up here, and then I can press A, and it pops up over there. So we know how to do that. A couple of ender pearls. A oh, couple of ender pearls. Bit of luck. We've got an enderman in here somewhere. Um. Uh. This is a red merchant. I have no idea. Ooh. 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 Hmm. Bye. Still useless. Let's get this ritual set up, shall we? Rituals. Rituals and rituals. Performing rituals. Performing rituals, you require a ritual brazier and a tablet, and you basically right click the tablet onto the brazier, and then you right click it with an empty hand to activate it. And the brazier we need is the brazier of containment. Let me get all that set up. Apparently, I right click that on there. Okay, and now I right click it again. Ooh, isn't this exciting? They've got to be within three blocks. The jar and the entity have got to be within three blocks. So we don't want to do the bees. I want to keep the bees. I definitely want to get the blaze in there. So, <clears throat> ready? Ha <laughs> ha! Look, a little blaze in a jar! Right, this is so cool. Um, I'm going to get all the others in jars now. <laughs> The Enderman may have escaped. I've got one jar here uh, that's in this chest that doesn't stack anymore, that looks empty, but there's an MBT tag on it. And it could be that the Enderman's in there, but the Enderman was mid teleport. So, but I can't see the Enderman around me. So I'm gonna go and get another Enderman anyway. So we got the Enderman and I actually managed to capture a second Enderman as well, which is very cool. So now what I'm thinking of doing is placing the jars in a kind of circle around this area. And then hopefully I can put my Drigmies in the middle here and I'm gonna have a star buckle down here as well picking up things that spit out from these jars like chicken eggs so I think I can go there's an enderman and where's the other enderman other enderman there's another enderman and then we can have a pig there really good right the next thing we need is uh, some mossy cobblestone because you need mossy cobblestone to create the henge that the Drigmies live in. And luckily enough, around here, there's quite a lot of mossy cobblestone. So I'll just go and pick one up. So I want my henge to be there, I think. And now I should be able to right click 
After a short time, the cobblestone, the user drink me charm on a block of mossy. After a short time, the cobblestone, right, so we use it. So do I left click? I'm clearly doing something wrong here. Give me five minutes or 10 minutes or two hours. I don't know whether this is going to work, but I've put a chest next to it. Uh... Nope, still nothing. All right, now we're trying a sauce jar next to it. Nope, still nothing. I'm an absolute derp. I'm trying to right click the blooming shard on it, but you need to make the charm. And the charm is going to be, um, give me charm, various food items by the looks of it. So I need six fish. I've got all of these, but I need six fish. We've got some fish and now we can make this. So it's all those items, three of them and Doo -doo 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 -doo. five more to go. Right, maybe this will work now. And I've also, I've only done four um, because that's all I want for now. And I've done a Starbuckle charm to pick up kind of drops that happen. Um, I need my Dominion wand. Okie dokie. Ahem. It's doing stuff. Look at that little guy. And he's now happy. Look, he's doing something. I haven't got any real drops yet, but this ball basically is growing and you can't see it because the Drigmies in it at the moment. But as this ball grows, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and eventually it will then convert that into all of the drops that we should be getting. And that's when it will use some sauce. And the other thing I want to put down is a Drigme, is a Starbuckle. And I want to set his location. He's now storing items in one place. And he's putting the egg in. This is fabulous. It's been one hour just over and check all of this out so we have got loads of raw meat which is pretty good and leather which is very handy we're getting rabbit's feet which are used we're getting wilden horns which is good getting some emeralds definitely a good amount of ender pearls and experience how much experience this actually is store all of that as well right let's because how do we consume this ah shift and right click consumes it all that was 23 levels. Well, that's not bad for an hour, is it? And we appear to be keeping up with the old sauce for this thing, which is very good. No problems with sauce. It is transferring whenever it creates stuff. I would like more wool, definitely. And I would like more blaze rods. So I'm gonna go and get some more sheep and some more blazes, and then we should be good. The next stage is to work out how we get all of this across to my AE system. Well, I solved the problem of where to put things. I'm using an ender chest. Uh, this is a yellow, yellow, yellow. So this is gonna be specific for this mob farm and mob drops. In fact, it'll be specific for mob farms in general. Got an extra blaze, got a couple of extra sheep, even got a drig me in a jar. Um, this happened by accident. I don't know how it happened, but one of my four drig me's managed to get downstairs or end up near enough to the thing to end up in the jar. Oh, well, um, so this is an ender chest linked to another one that's over at my base. And I've got a separate draw system here just for the drops coming out of that mob farm. Uh, this has got the yellow, yellow, yellow ender chest behind it, and then uh, laser IO pulling out and pushing into the draw system, and then on a lower priority, pushing into this because these things, or well, these three, are in the other draw system, and these I've got to decide what to do with. And sourceberries somehow coming from the Drigme. How bizarre. Well, I think that's probably a good wrapping up point. We've done so much in this episode again. We've got all of the source sorted, we've got farms done, we've got mob farms done. Wowzers. Sorry we didn't get to apotheosis. I'm completely underestimating how long this stuff takes to do. But next time, we're going to get into more spells. Now we've got tier two. We're going to get into the armor from Ars Nouveau. And then hopefully, we'll get into some serious enchanting. Catch you in the next one.